Hey, this is Daryl from the Jackson Fishing Team again. Um, this week we're going to start a series of uh, smallmouth flies, primarily for the Greenbrier River in West Virginia. For a trip I'm going on in, uh, I think it's in early May or late May. And uh, on there, so that'll be, that'll be really fun. But uh, the other thing is maybe watch for, uh, not maybe. There'll, there will be a, another additional video coming out later this week about another fly that I just, me and a buddy went fishing for some Bear Monday down in Florida and uh, tied up some different flies and we're going to show you what fly we had most success with and uh, we'll tie that fly. But uh, right now the fly that we're going to tie is uh, Jim Hink Hinky's Condor. It was actually designed for uh, fishing in uh, Patagonia, Chile for the huge uh, brown trout that they have. And uh, it was named after because of Chile's the land of the condors. And uh, so it's a dry fly pattern. And uh, we're going to tie it on a uh, size 6 for smallmouth. For the Greenbrier, it's a popular pattern, and uh, here we'll uh, we'll show you what it looks like, and then we'll uh, get tying it. It's uh, a pretty good this is a fly. fly. We're going to be tying it. Uh, I think it represents some kind of a dance, condor. We'll, uh, like I said, it was primarily designed for uh, Chile when he was down there for uh, fishing for um, large uh, browns and. Uh, he was, a, he was a native of uh, Virginia, and he uh, fished this primarily on the Shenandoah, the James River, and uh, it was, it's was it been a proven fly even in his local waters. Um, it's a large damsel fly, like I said, I suspect that's what it is. And it's also not only on, uh, on these trout, it's also a pretty good killer for bass. And maybe other panfish, you know, it depends on the size of the hook that you you got. Get it on. Um, you know, if you're going to tie this up, try them in blue or short truce, orange, brown, and black in sizes 6, 8, and 10. But we're going to tie a six size 6, and we're going to be tying this one in, as you can see, in short truce. And that's basically just the foam and... On there so why don't we uh, get going and uh, we'll uh, show the materials as we go along on there two we're gonna do is we're gonna use uh, a J stocker hook and a uh, dry fly hook to size 6 or well, actually a TMC not that it's a 2x long 1x fine it's since this is a, a floating fly we're using a dry fly hook and uh, we're gonna go ahead and debarb you know take a pliers or something to uh, debarb your hook, crush down that barb, or you can buy barbless hooks too. You know, but I have a bunch of barb hooks left, but I debarb them all anyway. And the thread we're going to use, we're going to use. Um, Some six hot in short truce since we're using a making a tie in a short truce body. And we'll just start this right back behind the, the eye of the hook and build up a, a body of wrap of thread. Snap or cut off your thread 
and we'll take it back to where the bard used to be. Move it forward a little bit. Our next material, we're going to make a body that's roughly somewhere just past the midway point using some peacock curl. You'll want maybe I'm going to use maybe five or six pieces. I'm just going to drag some out. And then I'm going to the brittle ends about an inch of, from the shortest and I'm gonna lock this in place and then try to lock these fibers in It'll kind of help build the body as well. And I'm going to bring it back to where I tied those fibers in. And I'm going to use the, the string here to reinforce those um, peacock curls. So I'm going to kind of twist the peacock curls around there. You could probably put a piece of wire. And then the peacock curl and then counter wrap the the wire but I'm gonna turn around and mat try to manually twist this off this is probably a long process or boring part give it some twist and then I'm gonna Give it a few wraps, and as soon as I start seeing some loose ends, or you know how it balloons out, I'm gonna twist it some more. One more twist, and I'll tie it off. Try to lock those fibers in. And then just trim these off. Don't you don't have to cut them all at one time. Just by uh, being careful not to cut your thread. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to add a little uh, super glue on top of those, on top of the threads that are in front of that peacock curl. So when I put my foam piece next, it won't, won't twist as bad. And my foam strips, it's roughly maybe a little about the same as the hook gap, maybe a little bit wider um, on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a, a narrow point here. And then I'm going to tie that in on top.
And I'm going to cut this off so that it's just past the bend of the hook. And then I'm going to kind of taper it. So it's got some kind of a taper. That looks pretty good. Could be better, but it's a fishing fly. You'll probably lose it on there. Next we're going to do is we're going to take some calf tail or kip tail. And uh, we're just going to take a, maybe a pinch like, like that right there. clean out there can be a lot of under fibers or shorties whatever you want to call them and this over tail or uh, over wing I should call it is going to be just the length just about the same length as uh, as that that thing right the piece there and I think I can trim some of this off yet give it a counter clockwise turn so it moves backwards Broke my thread. Alright, next we're going to do is we're going to use some, uh, you use black legs, I'm going to use some yellow with some bars on it just to give it some contrast. We're going to put two sets of legs on here. So I'll just take a strand. I'm going to fold it in half and then cut it in half. And that I'm going to make sure that's on its side. And the front leg is actually going to be an antenna. <coughs> and 
and then we'll uh, put the next next leg on. to the side. Next we're going to pick out uh, some, uh, a piece off of this cape of uh, Grizzly for whatever size hook you're using. And I'm going to peel off the, so I have just uh, a stem there. And then since I'm going to be wrapping away from me, I'm going to take some of these off here just so that they don't flare back. And uh, I'm going to tie this in for the hackle. trim off that little bit of hackle there. I'm going to apply my hackle pliers. Tie it off right there. And then pickle. Just to save our work. Right there, we can trim this off. And then I'm going to trim this just a little short. It will make it easier to whip finish. Like I said, these are on Tana. You don't want them very long just to stick out. Apply some glue. To my legs. Or actually to the thread. Give it a three or four turn whip finish.
and then we'll the back legs will be just slightly longer or equal to uh, that foam piece back there Hinkley's Condor fly for smallmouth. You know, even a large mouth, a large mouth bass might take it. Even a large trout probably will take that thing floating on the water. But uh, I think that's a great fly. I'm gonna have to give it a try on the Greenbrier. All right, that concludes this one here. Um, our next next fly will be another smallmouth fly. I'm not sure which one I'll pick yet, but uh, it'll be uh, maybe a Crelex, because I like fishing Crelex. It's been pretty good for me. Crelex has been a good fly for uh, not only the smallmouth, the largemouth, some brim. I've even caught uh, a redfish on a Crelex fly and, uh, and speckled trout, pinfish, even a hard hat head uh, catfish in the salt. So it's uh, It'll be a good fly. We'll, we'll tie that one next. But uh, this is Daryl Olson from the Jackson Fishing Team. We're signing off. And uh, give yourself uh, and try some of these uh, Jim Hinckley's uh, Condor and uh, see what you can catch with them. All right. See you on the water.